What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Three Way Podcast. I am Jerks, and as always, uh, missing one actually, but as always, joined by JD. JD, okay. Okay, that was. Funny. And of course, we got the best host in the Texas coast, uh, Animal Crossing God, uh, GameStop Legend. Uh, Lowe's public enemy, <laughs> public enemy 59. What's up, man? What's up, guys? <laughs> three Musketeers today. Yeah, we did have JD. I mean, JP. Damn, there's like so many J's now. We did have JP for you, like a man. like a hot second, and then he's like, I gotta go. I'm like, all right, then. <laughs> but, anyways, today <laughs> let's start off with gaming. Game over. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gaming today. This this week, uh, well, I mean, we've we've been getting a lot of like delays and, uh, like not only in in video games but in movies and sports and whatever, right? So delays are expected this uh, around right now, especially with the whole COVID nineteen situation. So this week, Last of Us has been confirmed to be delayed, but what's even worse, it's it's indefinite. There is no release date for it. Oh my god! So, what do you guys think about this? Yeah, um, Last of Us Two, one of the most hyped games coming out for PlayStation Four. It's been hyped for years. They've been showing it. They've already, you know, uh, postponed it once, and that was for developing reasons. Now yeah, they postponed it like uh, two times, no? Or this postponed it more yeah, than once? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So now with. Uh, COVID-19, uh, it's been indefinitely postponed. Uh, I'm not a big Last of Us fan, uh, but I do I do understand a lot of people are. Sucks for them. Uh, like, uh, And the bad thing is Sony knowing that they don't really know how long this whole situation will, will take, they haven't really put a, a date on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's, this is just another one of a string of delays that we can expect to see, um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Ghost of Tsushima is one of the games I'm most hyped about. Are we expecting that a delay on that? You possibly. Think? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's coming, man. I think it's inevitable, uh, especially if this goes into May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see uh, that date they just had put on it uh, standing for much longer. So. Uh, yeah, we could just expect an array of these uh, delays to happen. Nintendo, uh, you know, they haven't really mm -hmm. announced a bunch of their summer stuff, and I think it's actually turning out well for them because instead of uh, coming out with those release dates early in the year and then having to change that, now that they've waited, they can actually wait a little more right. and, you know, work on those games more. But, yeah. It's a disappointment for all the Last of Us fans out there. Well, there's a I mean, lot. Can, I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I don't have like I'm not gonna say I have extensive knowledge in game design. I do not. I've taken uh, I've got a couple associate's degrees, so I can tell you from from a, from a development standpoint, something like this, especially with a proprietary code uh, like Sony has, if you can't get your people to be able to work from home like that, and you can't bring them in the office, yeah, you get especially if a game has any glitches or bugs that need to be fixed. If they can't be able to, you know, if they can't come into the office and they can't take the computers home with them, it's gonna be real difficult for a game like that to get out like it's supposed to. Because you don't want to put a game out, you know, look at like I said, like I said before, look at Assassin's Creed. The game came out with so many bugs and glitches because they didn't fix them on time like they needed to. Same thing with Last of Us 2. It's it's such a big development property. Do you not want to put something out like that with a bunch of glitches and bugs? You want to make sure it's going to be right, it's going to be proper. And I think delaying it is probably the best option for them, just to make sure that that comes out proper like it's supposed to. But right now, this is the best time for those kind of games to come out because a lot of people are at home, they're at, they need entertainment, you know, and they want to get that out. So they, need to they do need to figure out a way to get people in the office or get them at home working on this and fix this and get that out as quick as they can and and basically take take uh, advantage of this time where people are going to be able to play video games and be able to use those those. Uh, those well, options. there's a lot of reports too coming from good guy Jason Schreier, who everybody loves, uh, <laughs> that apparently he was talking to some of the employees at Naughty Dog, and that to him they told him the game is pretty much done. Um, there's like little things they have to fix here and there, but the game is pretty much it's complete. Now, what what he was alluding to was that hey maybe they don't want to release it right now because they they feel they won't make as much money on it. So it's better to delay it, 
But I, I feel like if delaying it probably means we will see a delay in the consoles as well. Because this one is, is supposed to be like one of those last like bangers for the PS4, you know, last opportunity to try to push to sell sell more consoles or the PS4 maybe. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't yeah. I don't understand why they would delay it though, especially indefinitely. I mean, that's that's my, that's my weird. understanding. My understanding is that this isn't a development issue. This is a money issue. So yeah. they're not going to be able to get the physical copies out there to sell. Right. Uh, they're, it's going to be strictly digital. Right now, even though the market's moving digital, still the majority is physical. Right. So this is, to me, a money uh, delay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even when you get it in shelves, how are you going to... these? Electronic stores, Best Buy. I mean, they're closed. So a lot of them are doing curbside service too, though. Yeah, I mean, but they know they're gonna lose money, so they have no no advantage of releasing this game out right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they're just biding their time until this is over. That's why it is indefinite, because they don't. Usually, they delayed it, which they already did for development issues, and they gave a set date. This isn't. A development issue this is hey we're gonna wait till all this drama passes over mm-hmm. and once it does then we'll release the game but until then they they don't know when it's done so that's why it's indefinite um it's a smart business move it sucks for the fans um yeah. but it, it business wise it's the right it's the right thing to do no. but i mean it could go both ways because look at mm-hmm. animal crossing animal crossing has, has came out at the right time but well, right at the uh, I wouldn't say it came out at the right time. It, it it came out at an opportune time because of what's yeah. going yeah, on. Correct. So it wasn't like, yeah, hey, you were planning this. It was more like, no, oh shit, we hit the lottery. We, really we, were, we just don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. <laughs> and now yeah. it looks like I feel that their sales are are way more than they would have without this current situation. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. I, I feel like their sales big time were impacted on the good way because of all this. Uh, and Sony must have thought that that wouldn't happen to that game. It probably would have been the opposite. So that's the move they did. So right, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, well time will tell. We'll see whenever Last of Us 2 is going to be on release. Right now, again, it's indefinite. There's no release date. But speaking of video games and release dates and all that fun stuff, E3 has sent out a memo basically yesterday. Well, not yesterday. It was I believe this is on Thursday, maybe Friday, I'd forget whatever the fourth was. Oh, that's today. Anyways. <laughs> so Friday they sent out the memo, but today was released the information. Uh E3 is gonna be setting up a, a reimagine, is what they say. Reimagine version of E3 in 2021. Now, as far as 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. 20. Fuck, man, I can't even say those 20. words anymore. <laughs> 2020 is actually canceled. Yeah, it canceled E3 2020 early March. So there is like no no E3 this year. Uh, the rest yeah. of the industry, I think they're doing their own thing. I, I believe IGN is doing the Summer of Gaming, which is basically they've gotten a few uh, developers or companies on board to do it with them. They've got Square Enix, Bandai Namco, 2K Games, and Sega. Uh, basically, it's going to be an online digital event. And that's going to be interesting to see see how that plays out. But as far as E3 themselves, they said, no, we're not going to do anything this year. But next year, we're going to have a whole new format, basically, a whole new way of, of doing E3. Uh, what are you guys' th- uh, thoughts on that? Honestly, I think E3, what they should have done instead of just canceling everything, I mean, just cancel the live event, but have all these people put out creative videos and stuff. Because really, I mean, you go to E3 to see what's what's new, what's what's going to be coming out, what's right. happening in the in the in the world and what they needed to do is just have people put up presentations saying hey this is what we got going on and then they could have put that on their website and give you like maybe have a, a subscription fee you know for people who have it, who just for you know for like the, the big businesses they can go in and see it and then after about maybe a week or so put it out to the the uh, the, the white you know widespread world and that way everybody can have a chance to see it and that would have made them some money you know that way they wouldn't have to worry about the, you know losing they wouldn't lose too much off of their the fact that they couldn't put out E3 this year, but they could have still put out, everybody could still put out the product that they want to do and what they have going on. And I think that would have been, and hopefully that's what they're going to do with this next year. So they're, they're going to make more digital as well as a, as a live presentation. That way people can go in and say, hey, mm. um, this, is what I, this is what I really wanted to see. 
this is what's going on. You know, I know a lot of a lot of companies you know, like I said when people put stuff on Patreon, you get it for that first week as, as a Patreon subscriber, and then they'll put it out live to everybody else. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, for sure. You know. Lows. Um, I think this is something that we've been talking about forever. That E3 needs to evolve. It can't stay the way the same, the the way it's been. True. Because it's just gonna die off, and True. people are backing out, so they need yeah. to change. Uh, I think there's just a a reaction to all the stuff that's been happening lately. Uh, like we've said on this show, and many people have said, they need to have a media-focused days where the media can cover the new games, all the stuff going on, mm-hmm. uh, without the crowds, because E3 still wants to sell tickets, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But they need to have a fan-devoted days and media-devoted days. Um, going more digital, uh, like JD said, uh, going more on the digital side is something they also need to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, they need to change things. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're more gonna not, stop going. You know? Yeah, exactly. Or you're gonna stay back in the time. So uh, this is just some, uh, you know, something we all. I feel a lot of people feel, uh, feel they should have done. Uh, it's probably a year too late, but that's fine. Uh, we'll see how it goes in 2021. What exactly? Uh, they got in mind, and uh, hopefully it's something better for the fans and for the media. Yeah, I hope they it, they format it better, and they just basically uh, rework the whole back end of it. I mean, for us at home, watching it is like, well, I don't see any difference, but I'm pretty sure it's a whole different world whenever you're actually there. But uh, right. moving on to the next, uh, the last little uh, t- uh, topic here is uh, Resident Evil 3. Remake finally released on uh, April third on Friday. Uh, Losi said you got it. I know JP has it, and I'm not sure if JD is gonna be playing that or not. But uh, I'm a broke college student, so no, I haven't <laughs> been playing it in yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Somebody wants to buy college. it for me, then I, you know I'll be able. To oh yeah, I'm down for that too. Mind. Absolutely. I've been watching uh, uh, Carcinogen's videos on YouTube of him doing a no damage hardcore run on Resident Evil Three. Uh, it looks interesting. It looks good. Uh, Metacritic right now it has it sitting at 80, uh, the score 80, user score is 6.3, which is like average, like mid. Yeah, that's what's average, yeah. So I, I, I was, I put this on Twitter as well. I was hoping it didn't do so good only because I don't want like constantly having remakes of games, especially games that weren't like all that amazing to begin with. Like Resident Evil 3 was just okay at, at borderline when it originally released. Right. So coming out again, it's kind of like, uh, like okay. But then again, they they said when they were developing RE3 remake, is that they had a whole different team working on it. Uh, besides the other team, you know, and the and then they had another team working on RE2 remake at the same time. And it looks like from what I've been seeing so far, it looks like they're they're re they're redoing the storyline. They're making it canon. No longer doing the multiple storylines. I mean, they did do it in Resident Evil 2, but they they actually came out and said, okay, no, this Claire A and Leon B is canon. And in Resident Evil 3, they they just got rid of all that multiple ending stuff. It's just one ending. Threw in, uh, was it called uh, Operation Raccoon City or whatever it's called? Resistance? Uh, hmm. Yeah, the multiplayer. Evil Resistance. They threw that in there because they're saying that RE3 is pretty short, and it is pretty short. I mean, average gameplay so far from what i've been seeing is about five five to six hours i mean that's not a lot especially for a 60 dollar game uh triple a game no um not. uh I, I believe like i said i'm pretty sure everybody's saying that that's why they threw in the multiplayer to just to see you know fill in uh just to have a filler but also this gameplay from what i've been seeing too i mean it, it looks more actiony more more leaning towards what uh what we got in resident Evil 5 and if the way the things are going now, it looks like they're going to be doing redoing all their storylines. So maybe they're going to redo Resident Evil 4 and then it'd probably be a little bit different and more actiony. And I'm just scared they're going to go back into Resident Evil 6 action. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest uh, with you. The, the, you told me they took away the multiple story endings. I think that kind of for me takes away a lot of the a lot of the fact of the game being fun for me because I like that. I like, you know, different choices you make. Mm-hmm getting a different ending you know and that's what i love about mass effect 2 and 3 because you know you know oh, actually mass effect 1 2 and 3 because you you know you're basing your choices would depend on how your ending would go and i think that was great mm. and then taking away that from a from a game that you know has had it originally i think that's really i don't think it's a good idea me personally i don't think it's a great idea i think it's something they should let they should have kept that option in there and mm. so that, that would again that would have made for more replayability as well you know because you've got 
different endings you can get. So that, hey, let me go back and see what I can do to get this next ending. Let me just, you know, and if you have three or four different endings, you're going to want to play it some more to see what you can do. All right, Lowe's? Um, I, yeah, I, I think they stayed true to the uh, to the storyline. Basic premise of Resident Evil 3, they have changed a bunch of the settings uh, where mm -hmm. you, you actually end up, the kind of the story beats. Uh, Resident Evil 3 on PlayStation was more action-y than Resident Evil 2 and 1. And they keep that, uh, that dodge move that they implemented in the PlayStation, they keep that here. Um, and that's about it as far as, like, extra stuff. And, th and they didn't really go farther. They could have, uh, but they kind of kept reined themselves in and kept true to the original. That's something that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. They did make Carlos playable. Wasn't playable in the original version. Mm -hmm. They make they did uh, add uh, playable parts for him. Um, so far, I'm not too far in. Uh, I do like it. Um, right away, uh, Nemesis is introduced, and he's kind of like that that uh, overarching enemy throughout the story. Um, but so far, I like it. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. People are not too happy with the length of it. Uh, but, I mean, in, it's kind of staying true to the original. The original was short as well. Um, well, actually, they, they cut off some parts from the original. Like, they, 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 I believe they said they cut off, like, two, two chunks of it, like, two areas that were, I mean, not really correct. super important, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they did cut off some areas from the game. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. They weren't working. They were working uh, in conjunction at the same time that Resident Evil 2 was in development. Mm -hmm. It looks like they already had the game. They put all their efforts into Resistance. I can't really give like a yay or nay on the game until I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. um, but as of so far, I'm liking it. Um, but yeah, other than that, I can't really speak more to it. All right. All right, well, that's going to end it for gaming. Let's move into sports. Uh, what was it again? <gasps> Touchdown. <laughs> it's a home run. We can't do the cheering Goal! anymore. There's, there's no more, uh, no more audiences. Canceled. It's canceled. Sports. It's canceled. It's all canceled. <laughs> it's sports. All, canceled. all right, well, it, it looks like the Hall of Fame for the NBA has been announced. The inductees, which include Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, and Tim Duncan. Uh, you put this in there, Lowe, so do you have anything, uh, do you know if they added any more people in there, or is it just them specifically? Um, that's the, like, first ballot kind of class thing. I okay. think there, there's more votes for, like, the other inductees, but these were, like, no-brainers, like, everybody was kind of unanimous in it, so these are the first ones. There's still another round, a couple another uh, rounds of, uh, people to get in, but, yeah, man. I mean, uh, these were kind of like the legends uh, that, you know, there was no doubt they were going to get in. I think they made Kobe uh, eligible a little before he was, you know, the rules say. But obviously, with everything that's happened, mm -hmm. uh, they thought, yeah, it's a, we yeah. might as well just get put him in there now. Uh, but, yeah, they spoke to his wife and his daughter. Uh, they said they're very proud of him, you know, uh, obviously. And then, yeah, you also get Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan, two of the best power forwards slash centers in the in the history of NBA. Yeah. Uh, you know, trouble for anybody to face. And, yeah, they're getting in as well. Um, unfortunately, there's not much NBA to watch now. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, the uh, Hall of Fame will just have to suffice. Yeah, I see that they also added a – uh, the Houston Rockets coach Rudy Tom John. Oh yes, Fuck. Rudy T. Yeah, about yeah. time, man. <laughs> like the year, he's been kind of like on the cusp, but yeah, the man totally deserved to get in there, man. Uh, you know, a great coach. Uh, should should have probably won more, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, man, he's in. Congratulations to him. Uh, they d did an interview with him as well. He mm. looks. He looks pretty young, man. He looks like he can still uh, get on the court and uh, and and cut some people out. So yeah, man. Congratulations oh, to him. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, next topic in sports: Trump. President Trump speaks to the head of an American leagues. Uh, you put that in there as well, Los. Can you expand on that? 
Yeah, so he had a conference call with the the presidents, the commissioners of all the American leagues, NHL, MLB, NFL. Uh, we we don't have too much information on what exactly was said, what was all the topics about. Yeah. We did get a little bit of info of him telling the NFL that he's, you know, hoping that they can start up in September, right? September is usually the, the month where the NFL gets started. Right. Well, that's when the regular season starts, but the, I think the uh, preseason usually starts about mid-August, doesn't it? Yeah, and okay. that's just been announced that that's been canceled. So the count. NFL has told their players to just keep in shape, uh, yeah. you know, in their own ways, in their own homes, and – in their own manners and social distancing. So just to for them to keep in shape and be prepared. NFL, if there's any league that's going to play during this epidemic, it's the NFL. I you mean, the so? NFL yeah. to me is one of those leagues, yes. <laughs> now, do I think it's going to happen? No. But if any league is going to play through this, it's the NFL. Really, you think I about mean, it? I don't want to. I don't want to get into why and owners – I mean – I'm just saying that's the league I think is most likely to actually have their season start. Now, they have until September. That's a long way for Trump to tell them they hope they start. That's optimistic, and that's fine. I mean, we all want the NFL to start. You know, uh, we're we're hopeful, but that's what it is right now, hope. Uh, will this be done by then? I don't know. <laughs> like I said, if anybody's going to play, even to empty stadiums, I think is the NFL. You would think that the uh, baseball would be the one because those guys are already pretty much spread out apart as it is, so there wouldn't be that much uh, contact or interaction between the players. They could they could play a game like that, maybe even without a crowd. But yep, you know, I don't. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, hey, and if they the have, WWE can they, do it. Right. I mean, NBA it's the weirdest shit I've ever seen. Well, the WWE, WWE commissioner was uh, <laughs> Vince McMahon was on that call as well. I don't know who the WWE commissioner is now, but whoever it I think, is, I think Triple H is the one as, as the commissioner. Yeah, okay, well, Triple H was on so. the call as well. Either, Triple H either, was on it's the either call him or one of the, one of his one of his kids are. It's either either yeah, Stephanie Triple or Triple H was on the call as well. And that's I mean he's a big Trump supporter. Are so, you uh, ready? Oh yeah, good for him. They've been friends uh, for a while. Yeah. Uh, the UFC uh, president was in there as well. Dana White. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had everybody and their mama in that conference call. Oh, wow. I, can't wait to hear, I can't wait to hear more of what um, was said. I feel like it's very interesting. Yeah. But uh, I, I, all, other than that, all I heard was that just they're very thankful for the president, like, you know, keeping in touch, you know, uh, worrying about their organizations and uh, that pretty much all we got from that conference call okay. i hope more comes out in the future all right well let's hope so too uh that's gonna be it for sports let's move on into pop culture pop 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 disney pushes the release dates of all marvel movies in the next two years so, Marvel movies, Marvel shows, everything. Yeah. So yeah. JD was telling me this too earlier that they re they pushed back Black Widow and Mulan. Uh, I think right now the new release dates for those are I just had. Oh, um, here we go. I think, I think Mulan was in June, and I think Black Widow was in August, if I remember seeing right. Uh, let's see here. That sounds about right. Um, let's uh, let me let me read from this article from Polygon. As movie dates continue to get rolled back due to COVID-19 concerns, the 2020 release uh, schedules for major film studios are being shuffled around. Disney previously delayed the release of Black Widow and Mulan, though many on social media clamored for the movies to release directly on streaming. Yeah, right. Uh, likelihood of that happening always been low. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Bro. The, 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 those are money makers for them. The possibility yeah. of seeing Black Widow drop early on Disney Plus became even lower when Disney announced on Friday afternoon that the movies will now have a new release date later in 2020. Mulan coming out July 24th July. And, Black, and Black Widow on November 6th. So... I think okay. Black Widow is taking uh, the spot for the Eternals film that was going to come out that day or around that time. Yeah. So obviously this is going to push back a, a lot of their timeline. I think their phase, this is what, phase four of yeah, Marvel Universe? Like. Yeah, phase four is going to be pushed back. I think it was supposed to be set for like two years and probably now we're looking at three years. Uh, because they're going to introduce like whatever the new villain is for their Avengers uh, movies. 
So yeah. obviously, a lot of the movies are being pushed back not only because people can't go to the theaters and so they won't make as much money but also on top of that some of these movies are still being worked on are tv shows so yeah. people can't go to work to work on these films or movies so i don't know well, what, do, I mean, what do you guys think well, on that with movies it's a little easier because you don't need as much of a uh, you know your computer is a little bit easier to use the, the editing that kind of thing so it doesn't take as much so i like like it does with video games and you can always take that home with you but yeah i don't think you're right it's just because a lot of it's still in in production as far as filming goes and so that's going to make it a lot more difficult to get these things out when you can't get filming done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it makes sense for them to push everything back and get everything done like that. So it'll be a, a lot a lot better production and a lot, a lot safer for everybody else in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it sucks, man. As a Marvel fan, this is, yeah. like, stuff that I've been waiting for. I mean, Black Widow isn't one of my most anticipated films, but I was interested. That's part of the, the universe. I wanted to see what happened. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. see that end credits scene. Um, and yeah, obviously, if they're going in order, these all of these movies are in order. That it, you know, this, one gets pushed back, everything gets pushed back. So, uh, I, I mean, August is still to me, like I said, kind of reaching. Um, like if, if these no November, like, no, no, November no. Is Mulan, oh, okay, Mulan November. is July, yeah. Well, yeah. and Black Widow's November. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. Yeah, man, July for Mulan. That I I see a dis I see Disney Plus written all over that. Uh, I, I, mean, <laughs> I doubt people are, are gonna be going to movie theaters anytime soon. AMC is on the cusp of going out of business. Yeah, uh, there was actually talks so yeah, too man, that after this whole situation is over, or hopefully uh, sooner than later, knock on wood, um, that the movie theaters are still not gonna be like on the comeback trail only because they're going to be like, why do I want to be surrounded by strangers type of mentality is probably going to happen. Yeah. But honestly, well, the price are so expensive this. too. You know, you yeah. Have, you have pay almost like 40 bucks just to go out to see a movie by yourself. You know, God damn, how much yeah, are you buying I mean, at the concession stands? I just drink the popcorn in a movie. I mean, good <laughs> Lord, it's expensive. If you know? I was Disney, I would release this stuff on Disney plus try to make your money through the streaming service. A lot of people cancel their subscriptions. When the Mandalorian ended, I know. I uh, <laughs> try to get them back with these movies, um, but I mean, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I want to see these damn Marvel movies. I want to see this new phase begin and go from there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I this is we're gonna have to wait it out. If we're still going, I would say the, the smart move would be do the renting thing like everybody's doing right now. Let it rent on on a couple things for a couple weeks, maybe two three weeks, then put it on your streaming service after that. You know. Give people that kind of that experience first, you know, let them rent it out. But don't, I mean, don't do like the twenty dollar renting thing. That's freaking ridiculous. No, what they I mean, should do is let you rent it through the Disney Plus and offer that new service there. Yeah, where, but hey, then, then rent you're it paying for, for subscription, bucks, and you're you still get it renting. For, it, you, know? you get it for a week. You get it for a couple of days. Ten bucks. Boom. We get our money. Then yeah, you can subscribe. Uh, yeah, I mean that's what I would recommend. But well, if, if they know. if they use the renting, they still get the money off of that from the from the uh, whoever the company is that renting it. So they'll still get a still get a piece of that at least, and like I said, but yeah, if you, I don't think people are going to want to pay for subscription and rent a movie at the same time. You know, yeah. that's that's going to be extra extra money that they don't, they don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's it's, what uh, we have to deal with the I DLCs. I mean, it looks like this is the route they're going. Yeah. Theatrical releases, and they they just want to wait till it blows over and then release right. it. So. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that's how the way the cookie crumbles. Kim K versus Courtney. Kardashian, what happened oh, with these sisters? I didn't. Topic I didn't... of the day. <laughs> topic of the day. You know what really upsets me about this? I used to fight with my younger brothers and sisters all the time. It never made news. What the hell, you know? Uh, I don't yeah, have any we're not worth sisters, so I just millions fight and myself. millions of dollars, bro. God. Yeah. Um. So basically, what happened? I, I don't. I didn't see all of this. I saw. Well, I saw the clip, but we don't. I don't really know what led up to it. It seems that they were playing around and. Courtney accidentally or purposely dug her nails into Kim, and that triggered her. Boom. Triggered. Follows her. Kim attacks Courtney. Courtney says, hell not, nah, bitch. I don't care how much bigger you are. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Look, I don't watch these shows, and this actually happened like a good – this has been out there. I don't – it just kind of – Got viral, the, but the memes, man, uh, the memes. The fight, the fight was worth was worth it all. Like, I thought it was a pretty good fight. 
<laughs> Trust me, I, I mean, okay. this, and I'm comparing it to, like, ghetto fights between chicks, uh, all drunk fights between chicks. This is up there with those because well, there were there were there were smacks, like legit smacks. Nobody, there were you know this isn't like one of those girl fights where everyone misses and they went straight to the ground. Nah, they were like punches, pop, pop, pop. thrown, landed. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty good, man. It was, uh, I gotta say this, I, I don't follow these girls, regardless of what I think of them. That was a legitimate fight, and I gotta give them props <laughs> for that. Respect. For a legit mano a mano fight, tears were shed, things were said. I, I liked it, man. I want more of well, it. I want more here's of her, it. Here's what I'm seeing on E! Online News. This is what she said. was She just felt like every day they were picking on me and I just can't do it anymore. She feels more mad at Chloe than Kim because she expects it from Kim but not Chloe. So, mm. she was, but she said, apparently Courtney was just getting upset with being um, double teamed on and she didn't – you know, hit a breaking point is what it sounds like. You know, and then well, everybody's going to hit a breaking point. They're saying you know, that Courtney... They're, they're on camera. So. Courtney is leaving the show. She's taking a break from it. So, yeah. I guess it was that bad. Mm -hmm. Damn. Know. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a lot of money leaving on the table. But Courtney is the one that less that cares less about the whole publicity and the show. She's the one always, like, bad-mouthing that shit. Oh, for yeah, real? I mean, I don't know. I don't keep it, up with it. <laughs> If any if anybody would like leave that shit, it would be Courtney. Oh, this she, is her she, exit. She don't care about this that is shit. It. Deuces. This is it, man. It's the end. But it's speaking the end of, of the, the dynasty. End. My Hero Academia season four just ended, but at the end of season four, we did, com did get confirmation that season five is on its way. Uh, do you, when? Do you, I, I don't. This one, you guys. I've never watched it, so. Oh no. <laughs> when? Uh, what day? They don't have a release date yet. It's indefinite. <laughs> yeah. No way. We probably won't get that till next year, especially with all this going on. Uh, I still haven't finished uh, my hero of the season. I thought it was done with the movie, but apparently it's not. I just learned this today. Uh, <laughs> forgive me. Uh, but I will go and watch it all. Uh, I now I got stuff to to freaking binge. That's great. Uh. But, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, My Hero Academia, man, the best anime series out there. If you haven't watched it, what are you doing? Go watch My Hero <laughs> Academia. I have a life, you know. <laughs> yeah, this quarantine nah. life. <laughs> no right. life is better than My Hero <laughs> Academia. All right. Nothing. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, there was an Oh, man, there's going to be something I was going to tell you. I just forgot about it. Uh, fuck. I don't know. What we hang, gonna on, do? hang on, hang uh, on. Yeah. My Hero Academia is supposed to release in July of 2021. 2021, July? Yeah. That sounds about right. I think that's how long they took for the for this season to come out. I think they were... that's what's reported. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's fact, but that's what the well, they, guys are saying. It's, it's my Hero released, so. Season 4 was delayed as well, even prior to all this COVID-19 stuff. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. No, uh, but yeah, let's get into the, what is it? The final punches that would have been playing. <laughs> Go ahead, Los. What do you, what do you been playing for? Um, uh, Animal Crossing continues <laughs> to be legit. I'm addicted. I'm playing with my wife. We're both addicted. I love it. Well, co-op and all that good stuff. This is my shock face. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, Resident Evil 3 just got started. I want to do more uh i want to get back into call of duty uh the season is about to end so i want to rank up that battle pass as much as i can mm. um so jerks might holler at you later uh to you know get on with me okay. um then uh Ra rainbow six siege of course uh with the new updates coming on there and i think that's pretty much it oh and i'm going back and replaying resident evil the first one because uh, i kind of want to go back uh-huh do you have the, the the remake or the the original original yeah resident evil one remake uh i have it both for the ps4 and the switch but i've just been playing it on oh, wow. handheld okay. i'm going through jill's story right now so mm -hmm. uh yeah uh I'm kind of doing that while I play Resident Evil 3 as yeah. a like, refresher. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, what about you guys? JD? I mean, I've been I said, I've been working on my tutorials and stuff like that. I've, I've been going back and forth between Overwatch, Apex, and uh, Call of Duty. 
Uh, kind of the, the Overwatch. I don't think where you were playing that. It had kind of had a little fun little uh, April first thing where all the all the uh, characters had those little you know shaking Google eyes that you can put oh, on stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny to see that with a bunch yeah. of the characters with their with their mean faces and Google eyes. It was really kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. Again, I was. I also I did uh, realize you know if you have a Fandango uh, account and Fandango mm-hmm. Nile, you can use that. You can also use your gift cards to purchase movies on there. Um, mm-hmm. I actually was able to get the last Star Wars movie on there, so I can I'm, I've been able to watch that too. Oh, again, no. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, so, but uh, I mean, you, you know, just it just <laughs> trying to survive this uh, quarantine. I mean, I was, I was trying to say survive. I was social distancing before it was cool, so you know. But um, you know, yeah. especially just trying to keep busy. You know, yeah, same. Time, like so. I've been trying to keep busy myself. I've been working on a lot of like my YouTube sub. I have a giveaway going on right now. My Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv forward slash jrx four x. Uh, I've been trying to work on that. I've been hanging out with my girlfriend whenever I can because she still works. I mean, she works from home. Um, and what else? I've been playing Warzone. I, I finally got, like, more than one win. I got two solo wins so far. I'm a champ. I'm amazing. Uh, I've seen been ha- them both. Really? <laughs> been playing that. I've been playing uh, Apex. been trying to get back into Apex. And I've been playing on stream as well, A Plague Tale Innocence. That's a pretty good game. It's kind of like an on-rail shooter kind of mode where you really don't have to do much. You kind of just follow along the linear story and, you know, just basically you're finding out about the story. It's pretty interesting, though. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see here. All right, then. Well, I guess that's going to be it for us today, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for everybody who stopped by for, for listening to us on Spotify, Anchor, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, what was it, Google Cast, or any other platform uh, that provides podcasting. Uh, thank you, everybody who watches on YouTube. Uh, please, if you guys liked uh, anything or want to have your own like comment on anything, please leave it in the comments. Uh, share, like, subscribe if you don't mind. And yeah, thank you guys. And, uh, you know, stay safe, wash your hands and, uh, six feet, give that six feet. Actually, I think now they're Peace. saying, they're saying everybody get a fucking like face mask now. So I gotta go get one. Yeah, I got some, so I'm ready. They're hard to find. They're gonna be hard to find right now. They're not, not very, uh, <laughs> All uh right, out guys. there right now. So. All right, guys. Thank you so much again. Uh, bye-bye. Right. Toodles.